peeps, just a quick one. Um, this is the outside cupboard. As you can quite see, because it's a cupboard and it's on the outside. I'm taking that out, and I'll show you for why. When we get inside, let the camera adjust a bit. That's the inside of the cupboard. As you can see, my beautiful assistant's just opened the door for me. And this is the top of it, this is fully enclosed in the top. Oh, still got some bits out of it. Some more insulation. More insulation, not more insulation. Basically, this cupboard is going to come out in its entirety. It's roughly going to stay exactly as it is as you see it except I'm going to swap the doors around. That door is going up there and that door is going down there. Uh, I've started taking this cupboard apart, as you can see. This used to be up here and was for the radio console so you could access the radio. It's actually got locking latches on it in this one, so I'm going to take them out and reuse them in other places where I'll keep more important stuff. Now, the reason I'm talking to you at the moment is this cupboard is now free. It will come out, there's a gap. Get my whole hand in there, I've shifted the whole cupboard that way about two inches. And it's now wedged tighter than a nun's chuff. Apologies to any nuns. If you think you're gonna find a shortcut to taking this cabinet out, forget about it, just go straight for the long route. This is such a tight fit, and I mean such a tight fit. It's a friction fit, you don't need these blocks. And yet there are two blocks on each side, eight blocks holding it up, 16 screws. To take no weight at all. It doesn't take any weight, it's just a little radio up there. There's literally not enough room up in that shelf to put anything heavy enough. Even you could fill it with lead bars and it would still hold up lead bars with the amount of screws you've got holding it up. Everything is totally over-engineered. If you ever think to yourself, oh, I'll just do this, don't. There's no just doing in ambulance conversions. The hinges alone, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws just to hold the hinges on. These stainless steel piano hinges. And sometimes, like these cupboards up here, because they don't open far enough, you have to undo the screws that hold the hinge on to the cabinet, then take the door off, and then take the hinge off the cabinet. In the case of this one, I think it was 11 screws, 12 screws, times two, plus the stay, just to get the door off. Then you go and put it back together with your handle crooking and annoy yourself for ages. But anyway, I digress. Hey peeps, right we're getting there. We've got that top section out, which I've cut out here. And if you can see that. Can you see the profile on the end of that? They router down the board to fit in the slot. So Next thing I've got to do is buy myself a router so I can change these panels about if I want to fit them inside the metal frame. You know, what I've done was I literally just cut through that, levered it out of that hole, and now I'm cutting about an inch and a half off the top so I can then knock this panel out and then I can just take this whole thing out in one go. It is so tight and built in place that it's not coming out. Now this beam here is going to run across there and be the leading edge for my bed which is going to come out to the front of this drawer. So this drawer will be inside the garage. Or oh, that cupboard will anyway. Um, I'll probably have the top opening so I can get access to it at some point. But this leading edge is three inches too short to go the full width of the van anyway. So I figured cut an inch off, it's now four inches too short to go across the width of the van. Either way I've got to add an extra bit to it at some point to make the entire side of the van look like the front of the bed look neat because I want it to look the same and it's going to be built with the same panels I mean this panel here is literally just going to be my bed base but obviously it's going to be bigger obviously I've got to find somebody who's breaking in an ambulance or I'll just fit the frame in and then frame the back out up to the back doors with wood I have thought about that and having that as a flip up lid so I can actually stand on the back step while the bed's in place that's all got to be finalised. Anyway, at the moment I'm trying to get this damn cupboard out, which means cutting through this. Right, here we go. Bit of angle grinding, bit of hacksawing. Finished off with a hammer. 
cut an inch off. That's the profile. I don't know where that's going to show up best. It's the corner profile that I've just cut through. That's where the boards slot into there and there. That's just the finishing edge, make it look nice. Anyway, this whole cover can now finally come out and go rock and work and land its back rock and work on it easier. Anyway, there we go, peeps, all done. All right, and peeps, got the cover out as you can see. Nice and open. Here's the cupboard down here. I've swapped the door over and swapped sides. So this big door here used to be at that end. You undo two bolts and you can slide these runners up and down. They've got little grips inside. As you do the bolt open, they open up like butterflies and uh, grip inside the channel. Hello peeps, I'm back at the cabinet. Just before I uh, put the end piece in for the front section I thought I'd show you how these go together underneath you've got an allen bolt when you do that allen bolt up it forces these two jaws apart I'm not sure if you can see that it forces these apart well, these slide inside this piece of channel over here so you slide them inside when they're nice and loose, you do the bolt up, they open out and they clamp solidly in place. Just like that, just slots in. Now the other end, the Allen key is actually rounded off so I'm going to have to hammer it in. So I'm going to hammer it in, it's going to be a bit noisy for the camera, so I'm going to hammer it in and then get back to you. Okay so there we are, it's in. Can you see in there? There's the teeth of that flappy bit of metal I showed you that's opened up inside the channel. That's what locks it inside the channel. Right, I know the angles aren't very good but I'm running out of space. This is how this cabinet is going to sit on the floor from that side of the van to that side of the van. This will be my bed section. This will be the cupboard underneath that will open out across there and will be a pass through so I can put long objects in the van. This side will be blocked off because it will have drawers in here opening that way which will be opening out of that back door there. So that's the first door you open. So you'll open that door up and there'll be drawers for tools in there for me everyday tools. Obviously this entire thing has got to be twisted around and put back into place and obviously it's not very tall so it'll be raised up off the floor because the whole floor where you can see these wheel arches where you can see those checker plate wheel arches the whole floor from there backwards is going to be raised up to the level of the wheel arches so that floor is going to be five inches higher than it is from there forward will be this height normal height this is where i do my cooking my washing shower everything else Back there, where I'm always sitting down, I don't mind losing five inches of floor. Right then, hello peeps. As you can see, hopefully, that entire cupboard is now out. It's actually on the floor here being used as a workbench. Um, I'm basically doing what I can at the moment with what I've got. My solar chargers control has finally turned up. So I can start wiring in the uh, solar panels, which means I can actually put the solar panels on the roof. But as soon as I've took this cupboard out, while I was waiting for the solar charger to turn up, I figured I'd finish this cupboard first. You can see I've started to frame out where the toilet's going to go. That's going to be the toilet wall. Well, the toilet wall will be there. It'll be fixed to that baton. Obviously come up to the ceiling. And it will come out to somewhere... I need a, I need a pointy stick. I should have made myself a pointy stick. It will come across the ceiling there and it will finish there alongside that piece of aluminium trim and run all the way down um, not sure what I'm going to do about that wall yet I don't know whether I'm going to remove it and totally replace it or whether I'm just going to patch it up as it is and then cover it in some sort of waterproof vinyl it's only going to be the toilet the shower is going to be across there in the middle of the van where the roof light is so that's where we are at the moment 
um, the cupboard is that was there is now changed into being part of my bed I've got all these bits of the plastic shelving that was inside it left over I'm going to use that for patching up that wall um, all behind that wall and down that side there and down that side of the door I've put in this foil backed or foil fronted whatever you want to call it 10 millimeter closed cell foam insulation and I've topped that off with, you can't see it very well, well I can't anyway, with the um, recycled bottle insulation. I did buy myself a sheet of ply for making the toilet walls. I'm not sure if you can see the uh, curve on that. Banana wood ply, lovely isn't it? But it cost me a fiver instead of 34 quid. So 